Welcome to GSR24, the Global Symposium for Regulators being held in Kampala in Uganda this year. And I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Professor Sandra Maximiano, who is the Chairwoman of the Board of Directors for the National Authority of Communications for Portugal, ANACOM. Professor Maximiano, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Now, the digital revolution that we're facing is a driving force for change. How has ANACOM been evolving to navigate these, what some would say, turbulent but exciting waters? Yeah, as you said, uh, very turbulent but very exciting and very challenging. So we are getting prepared by, um, let's say, just looking at this ecosystem as a whole. So the, the ANACOM now is, uh, is actually uh, has new, uh, new competences in uh, regulating the digital services. So under the scope of Digital Service Act, regulating this uh, digital ecosystem. Also, we are paying uh, very close attention to the, uh, regulating the AI uh, as well and getting prepared for that. And as, uh, as you know, and everyone is expecting AI to be very human-centered, so we are also focusing uh, very much on uh, behavioural insights and how we can get more behavioural insights into regulation, which is a big, challenging, uh, a big challenge that uh, I think all regulators uh, should face now and uh, be more attentive to what we uh, call uh, the behavioural biases that all humans face. So um, be more balanced uh, uh, when we look at the regulation, looking at the demand and the supply side. So it's very important. And to really facing all these challenges, we are focusing on, like, let's say, five dimensions. So we focus a lot on network security, which is an extremely important dimension nowadays. And to be sure that, uh, um, that our, uh, especially the, the, the critical infrastructure, is secure and uh, and that relates with our second component uh, in in these uh, five strategic uh, points which is connectivity so we really need to be sure that uh, critical infrastructure is there to assure that we have a good connectivity and portugal is really uh, focused on uh, uh, getting uh, connection in, in all territories so the territorial digital cohesion is is a priority for us and like a third uh, dimension, I'll say innovation. So we can't, uh, uh, we can't lag behind uh, in this uh, challenging, uh, uh, challenging world. So as regulators, as well, we are using some new um, uh, digital tools, uh, AI into the, uh, the regulation as well. So I can give you some, uh, some examples. Um, we, we that, like for instance, we have a new platform, Geo Anacom, which is a geospatial referenced uh, platform, um, AI for applying to complaints, so uh, treatment uh, complaints, and not, not only looking at the complaints that people uh, submit to Anacom, but as well how like, people react in social media, for instance. So, so we can analyze uh, um, kind of a um, lot of data, uh, also related with, uh, with innovation, we have like a, another example on uh, uh, spectrum monitoring that's also getting more data driven and uh, to complement uh, human action. So I think it's extremely important. And the uh, fourth dimension is uh, that for us is extremely relevant is uh, consumer protection and sustainability. And related to that, I, I can uh, and probably will have time to, to talk a bit about that later, but uh, so we have uh, some, uh, uh, our new submarine cable that has a smart component that is actually going to uh, look at, uh, let's say, earthquake activity and uh, some climate changes. And so collecting data that is uh, meant for uh, improving this, uh, this uh, consumer and uh, users protection as well. And, uh, and relates to, to the sustainability development goal, so it's really important for us. And uh, the last component, of course, international cooperation. And we, it's uh, the reason we are here today, and to, especially with the um, Portuguese spoken countries, so we have a very good uh, um, a connection and we, we, help, uh, we help them and they help us as well in all this uh, uh, sort of uh, Training, so we're building capacities, and and uh, and for us, it's very important to understand also the, their their own experiences and realities. 
Now, you've gone into a certain amount of depth there, but I wonder, perhaps, are there any concrete examples that you think uh, would be particularly useful and interesting for our audience to, to know about? So, within this dimension, um, as I mentioned before, so the security one, for, for example, so, so we are working, I think the network security is a, it's a, it's a good point because it's an it's a, it's a area where we are working in close cooperation with a, a large set of entities. And I think it's very important to, you know, to understand that nowadays we cannot be alone at all. So I'll give you an example of, uh, for instance, uh, Portugal in 2017, we suffered from a big uh, um, wildfires and uh, th that destroyed part of our communication system. And then we had really to work uh, to, to, to build a working group and uh, like a task force. And that task force is co co comprised by different uh, sort of entities and working in uh, close cooperation with them to set new guidelines and new procedures for, uh, to, to react uh, under these circumstances. So this is one example, but we have also another, other groups or other task force um, to, for instance, to, to, um, to know which uh, uh, critical infrastructures that are in the country. So also to, to have this collection of the, of the critical infrastructures, we need a joint, uh, a joint work. And we work closely. We also have like a task force with the operators to have like special, let's say, security commissions to, to, to work in case of uh, incidents happen. So I think it's a, it's a good example of where collaboration is, is a very important point. On the innovation side, for instance, I mentioned the GeoAnacom, IAXIA, so the, the, these uh, this new uh, platforms that we are uh, developing, uh, and, and the spectrum monitoring as well, all this, uh, uh, this work that we have been doing more recently, and um, the consumer protection. We have many examples, but for instance, what we call uh, uh, to work closely with people that have some, uh, some disabilities and special regulation uh, target these, uh, these uh, consumers, working also to improve uh, digital literacy. So these are all these dimensions that are extremely important, and so I think good examples. In relation to connectivity, Portugal is perceived to be a leader in the submarine cables ecosystem. Could you tell us perhaps some of the reasons you dedicate so many efforts to international connectivity, and in particular the submarine cable systems? Yeah, well, if you look to the world map, we can see that Portugal is a perfect location for landing submarine cables. And so we have the third largest exclusive economic zone uh, in the uh, in, uh, European Union, the fifth largest uh, in, the, in, uh, in Europe, and the 20th lar largest in the world. So, so we have to be concerned about the security of, uh, of uh, submarine cables. And we also have a lot of experience on, on, on them because we have these two main islands, so Azores and Madeira, and we have been connecting this, uh, these islands to the mainland. And uh, so, so in, in our cave, a cable, so our submarine cable now is reaching the end of life. So we are starting a construction uh, of a new cable that connects these uh, two islands to the mainland. And this cable is particularly interesting because it has a smart component. So this is, uh, this is very interesting, this uh, cable that connects the main island to, to, the, to, to Azores and Madeira. The new cable that we are constructing it has this smart component, which is science monitor resilient telecommunications component. And this will allow us to check for earthquake activity, the climate changes, and uh, of course, collecting some uh, lots of interesting data for research purpose, but also for you know environmental uh, protection and, and some other important aspects uh, for our security. So this is very important, but also for national defense, because as you can imagine, uh, th there will be lots of other type of information that we can collect with these sensors. So Portugal is especially concerned with that. So we are working in cooperation with uh, a large set of entities and to, to see how we are going to treat this data and deal with the data. So we are concerned with the physical infrastructure, but also with, as well with the data aspect of it. 
and um, and and as well this um, let's say these sensors will allow us to also to easily monitor other cables that are uh, that are around and to keep uh, the security of other uh, cable systems also in place and and and, uh, and, and improve on that so it's um, i think it's a very a very good uh, move that we are doing and i think it sets an example for for other um, uh, cons uh, cables, subsea cables constructions in the future, for well, sure. Well, thank you very much indeed for sharing yes. these fascinating insights with us. Uh, I didn't know there was quite so much going on there. In fact, uh, yes, it's all there under the water there. So yes. uh, um, we don't really know about it and, until it stops working. And then uh, and then, <laughs> then we that certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and sometimes stops working just because of a fisherman activity or a very simple, that's uh, exactly. unbelievable. And it, uh, and it ca cuts these fibers. Yeah. Well, yes. that's wonderful. I'm glad, that, I'm glad that that's all that work's happening. But thank you so much for joining us in the yes, studio today. So. And, and hopefully we'll catch up with you again very soon. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then do stay with us and uh, check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as podcasts on our podcast channels. And for further information, visit www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.